Good. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the women's 18U final between Defensa from Burlington, Ontario, and the Manitoba Bisons from Winnipeg, coached by Ken Bentley. With me in the booth here is Rod Walsh, ex-national team player, and your team did a fabulous job this weekend, Rod. We, uh, we had a lot of fun. It was felt like a marathon, like most teams in this tournament, but it's, um, it was a great tournament, well run, and uh, proud of my guys. At the end of the day, what did they do? We won a gold medal in the uh, Div 2, uh, Tier 2, and uh, I have a bunch of U17s coming back to play U18, and they'll be big and stronger next year, so I get to coach them all over again. Excellent. Great. Well, on to this match. Uh, key players to watch from Defensa. You need to watch number 9, Emily Ruder, and number 7, Nicolota Serator. Serator. And then on the uh, Bison side, you want to you watch... Number seven, the captain, Christina Souza, and number 11, Taylor Pischke. This is going to be a really exciting match here. This is so physical. It's amazing. Each and every year we come back to this tournament and we see the differences, Greg, and it's, uh, it's ex really exciting, the level of ball and the size of the athletes. It's, it's fantastic. So as far as uh, the emotional makeup of the team, on the Bison side, they pride themselves in that Winnipeg consistency, and on the other side, Defensa, they like the fact that they're very athletic and very aggressive, and so this should make a really interesting uh, play in this game because you've got two apparently psychologically different teams. Well, they're going to come out with game plans and uh, hopefully stick to them, and uh, and we're going to see uh, some exciting, exciting volleyball. Good to be all ready to go. Referees are just making the final adjustments. And number two, Crystal Mulder from the, looks like number two. It's always a cat and mouse game at the first, but especially when they haven't played each other. Right. And uh, we'll see who, uh, who figures out who out first. Looks like an equipment malfunction. <laughs> the fishing net. The fishing net. The fishing net is not doing what it's supposed <laughs> to do. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to this. I uh, have not seen either one of these teams play to date, but they both had uh, pretty good records as they come into the into this match. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people see is they see six people on the court at the end of a of a in a gold medal match like that and I can tell you this um, it takes the whole team to get here yeah. unfortunately you can only put six on the court maybe seven I guess every now and then with the libero number 12 Danica Picklick to serve and she's a spin server it's deep down the line setter number nine puts the ball up to seven seven swings at it. it's dug into the center of the court the captain sets the ball in a big swing by number five, and it's out. We are up to uh, just a little bit of uh, testing. Probably going to see them test here, Greg, a little bit of the liberos. I would if I was serving right away here. Number seven sets the ball to the weak side. It's hit out of bounds. Off the block by number 10, Miranda Schmidt. That was a great hit. Number 10, Miranda Schmidt back to serve. Numbers are wrong. Served into the center of the court. It's pass, good pass. Sets the out ball to number seven. She takes a swing at it. It's dug, and it lands right on the line. That dig right there, they'll feel that out a little bit more, and she's got to get in a little better position on the court, out of position one there to make that dig. She's getting caught inside, and that's why that ball's getting outside. Off the dig. Number 10, Sch Schmidt to serve again. Ball's back in the same position. It's a quick set to 14, and it's hit out, but not by much. Oh, wow, that was close. Decisive call, though. 14 is going to be a go to in that middle for sure. Looks like the referee has overruled the call, called it in, and number 14 will now serve. 
we don't see that that often, but uh, every now and then the referee has to step up and do that. Katrina Jovicic. Ball served into position five and out. I don't understand that that, that serve, they short court themselves so much across the, 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 the diagonal like that, and they run out of court completely on that serve. They should be feeling the full of the court. Number, serve, number seven, the lefty uh, captain serves. Balls into the net. Indicative of most of the matches we've seen this afternoon, teams feeling each other out, making a few mental errors. Number seven, Nicoletta Serrator to serve, and the spike server. And she's in the net as well. When you get a chance like that, when someone serves the ball and they serve out, you have to serve the next one in. That's, that's pretty darn important. Number five, Taylor to serve. Jump float. Ball's into the center of the court. Outside set. Oh, she almost took her head off of that one. That's a good mismatch out there. I hope the setter for Manitoba is aware of that because that was key right there. That The right side blocker was not even close there. Number four to serve. Ball's passed well by the Liberal. And we run an X play. Ball's dug back to the Bisons. Back outside the 12. 12 swings cross court. Setter's in good position. Six takes a swing. Liberal gets a piece of it. And number nine makes a digging error. Ball's out of bounds to Defensa. That's mature playing right there. Ball passing the net back and forth three or four different times in a row like that and just waiting, waiting, waiting. That's that's excellent ball. Number four to serve. It's passed tight by Pischke. It's an over bump and it's killed by number 13. I'd sooner see someone passing the ball though, aggressively like that, especially early on, and passing the ball not short by five or six feet, but every now and then missing one close because it really tells you that they're in the game. Yeah, you bet. And yeah. Bentley's called a timeout. Our first set of stats tells us that uh, the offense for defense has been spread out quite a bit. The offense for the Bisons seems to be in one spot, and service errors are making a dif difference at this point in the game. And if we're getting some stats to organized up here, Greg, I bet there's a couple of the coaches right now are starting to do a little bit of tallying as well and telling the players in this timeout who they have to concentrate on. If the setters are smart, they'll just stay ahead of, they. what they'll try to do is they'll just try to stay ahead of set particular sets and a particular strategy and certain combinations and then go away from that just when they think the other team is caught up so to Why do you think Ken would call a timeout at this point when it's only 6-4? Well, I think... He's seen something. He has seen something, exactly, and he wants to say, listen, we need to bear down here right now and settle into this. There's, they're just not miss. they're not uh, coordinated right now. Number four, Andrea Fisher to serve. Ball's deep to one. Pischke passes a nice ball. Set to the backside. Hit cross court is dug. And now it's back over the net. Pass again by Pischke. Setter sets an out. Set again. That's a ball great block rejected. right there. Number two, the offside hitter sets the ball. 12 takes a swing. It's dug. Setter sets a pipe ball. Number four, Andrea takes a swing. Ball comes back outside to 12 and it's a roll shot. And it's dug. And an easy set to the outside. And number six chips away at it. I was talking to Ben Josephson, the coach of the Trinity uh, men's team, and uh, whenever the ball changes direction, that's one of the things that he works on a lot. And you can see it right there. The ball quickly changed direction, and into the pot it goes. Number 14 uh, is in for Taylor Pischke. Ball served into position one. She makes a great pass right off the bench. And 12 gets blocked. Number 13 and number 9 combined. Eventually you'll get that block. You just be patient, and that's what they're doing right now on Manitoba side. They're really starting to look at where that ball is going to end up if their serve is tough. Four serves again, same spot. Ball's passed into the center of the court. 12's going to roll it in. Nice dig. Ball goes out to 6 on the far side. Deep shot, just out. That ball that goes out like that, I asked my players, I want to see players early on in the match especially challenge that block see what they're made of don't pansy that ball over into the back court physically go at the block Jordana Mel to serve boss passed into two 13 takes a swipe at the ball goes back to the backside again hits cross court and it's out 
Looks like the backside's part of their strategy at this point. Uh huh. And Bisons have to, f they have to pick it up here a little bit. For their confidence, they're just a little bit hesitant. They need some leadership out of their setting right now. 13 to serve. Falls into the middle. Missed pass by number 12, Danica Picklick. Have another, another sub. Back in comes Taylor Krischke. Exactly what we're talking about. They're trying to give her, they probably just took her out, give her a little bit of time just to look at the game again from the outside. And sometimes that really helps the player as well, just Ten. to get out of the game for a few seconds. 10-5 to score. Ball's in play. Taylor makes a nice pass. 12 takes a swing. Deep cross. -cut. That's better. They ain't there. Hit the ball and hit it hard. That's a huge, it that's a huge difference. They put it in. <laughs> Number two, Crystal Mulder back to serve for the Bison, scores 6-10. Right in the center of the court, ball gets a good pass, goes to the outside to six, six swings, hits it down the line. Those are type of hits you have to, when the ball gets set out so nicely on the outside like that, you cannot panic on the defensive side and say, oh, we're no good, we can't do this. You have, to, you have to know you're going to have to give them those ones every now and then. Number nine, Emily Reuter to serve. It's down the line to Taylor Pischke. Ball gets set as a step out. Cross court shot, number 10. Ten's looking for a touch. Nobody's going to call it. Manitoba's been struggling a little bit right now, and they're looking for that call because they're looking for the other team to make the mistake. They've got to pick it up here. Nine to serve again, scores 12-6. Missed pass by the Liberal, a little bit mishandled, got away with that one, and the roll shot scores. They don't want to be counting on that stuff. They need to play and get organized over here. And they can do it, obviously, anyone that gets into a final match like this, they deserve to be there, so I'm sure we're going to see a turnaround here. Number 12, Danica Pickwick to serve. It's the ball shallow, great serve. There we go. There, someone has to step up here and start showing, being a little bit more aggressive. Someone to spark them along a bit. How much does an off-speed shot change the nature of the serve receivers? Yeah, they were a little bit back uh, on their heels a bit back there. Danica again. Same spot, a little bit deeper, good pass, quick set. Middle hitter sets, passes the ball up. Kishke takes a swing. Ball goes pipe, ball to four. A little bit of an off-speed shot scores. This is one of the things we try to work on with young athletes is recognizing when the ball is going to be hit hard and when it's not going to be hit hard. And that sixth position in the middle back has to step up knowing that they don't have to stay so far in the backcourt. It makes a huge difference in that transition ball. Number six, Michaela Reeser to serve. Handcuffs the passer. Ball goes out to Taylor. She takes a swing. There's no block. Over bump. And she kills it. They know that number five can hang, swing and hit that ball, and they should be blocking that ball. Even though it was a transition, a t kind of an awkward ball, they, know, they have to be in her face. They can't give her that free swing all the time. Schmidt serves, good pass. Goes to number four on the outside. Handcuffs Danica again, and it's a kill. That ball kind of went in between the seam of the block. They're going to have to be aware of that and get, get that closed a little tighter and press on that block. Get over on the other side. 14, Katarina jo Jovicic to serve. In the center of the court, good pass by 12, jump set, and a quick set by eight. Kill by eight. When the setter's front row like that, that's such a fun play for a setter to jump and make a blocker on the left side on, on, on the defense, commit to her, and then set that middle player like that. That's a lot of fun. Ball's in play, left-handed setter, number seven serves. Pass to the quick set. Oh, it's I like this. I like this when the setter is challenging off the net. Setter's moving away from the play, and they have the guts to fire that up into the middle, and it'll make that blocker on the other side stay there just long enough so that they can set outside eventually. But you hate the campfire defense at the end. <laughs> number seven to serve. Into the center of the court. It's an over bump. 13 takes a swing. It's and kills the ball. And we have a second timeout by Ken Bentley. 
Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, as a player and as a coach, you don't, sometimes it's hard to know when to call these timeouts, but he's obviously trying to get them to adjust and give them the information earlier on in this first set and try to create that momentum, hopefully, to win this set and then to bring it into the second set. Probably, uh, probably a chatting. He's probably an inspirational chat, poss possibly. Our statisticians, Luke Ryan and Austin, uh, doing a great job up here. And, and the big indicator on stats at present is that defense has got a really good uh, spread offense. Lots of people hitting. Not very many errors. Uh, on the other side of the net, Bison's are having a tough time getting in gear. Uh, lots of lots of errors, lots of continues, and not many kills. So uh, the key people seem to be stepping up for Defensa at this point. So much in volleyball has to do with it, discipline, discipline, blocking, systematically knowing where you're supposed to be on the block so that your back row players can play around the block, what we call a shadow of the block, so that they're in a position so that they can just dig the ball right back up and, and play it out in transition. Number seven, Sarah Tortoise serve. Pass it in the center court again. Number two takes this roll shot swing and scores. This is exactly the same situation, just the opposite team. That girl could not hit that ball hard and six has to step up. Position six has to step up and uh, take control of that ball. Number five, Pischke to serve. Great float serve in the center of the court. Quick set. Great dig by the liberal. Ball's up. Ball's over the net. Quick set. Goes to the back row. C ball to number seven. Ball's up again. Backside set to the weak side hitter. And it's a great dig. Ball comes over and is an easy one. Good pass from the Libero. Quick set. And number nine scores. That looks like the first ball they've scored out of the middle. Exactly. And isn't it late. interesting because that it's the control of that free ball. That transition ball, they've finally got their hands on it and they're actually doing a great job in that situation running back into the middle. Pischke to serve again. Ball goes into six. Good pass. Goes quick set right back at them. Looks like four hits. And it is. You'll always see that sometimes with clever clever setters. What they'll do is, oh, they scored on, they scored on us out of the middle, so we're going to turn right around and do the same thing. They just got to set that ball a little higher. Scores narrow, 13-16. Another good serve. Great pass. Goes to four. Ball's up in the middle of the court. Goes quick set again. Tips the ball. It's mistimed. Ball goes to the backside. See ball to seven. And a great positive touch by Pischke. Almost got that big. Sometimes we see the ball not being blocked completely down. And it's, a it's very exciting to block the ball hard down, but touching what we call a soft block and bringing it under control is just as effective. Number four to serve. Pischke passes in the center of the court. High set to 12, doesn't get a good start on it. Ball is dumped by the setter. Recovered by Bison's 12, takes a swing. Deep cross court shot is dug. Back to the outside to six, tries to wipe it off. Ball hit the aerial first. That set was just a little too tight and a little inside, and the hitter was expecting to see it probably another foot and a half to two feet. It's a game of, pre of precision here. Number nine, Jordana Mill to serve. Mill to serve. Served into the center of the court. Ball's passed at the 10-foot line. Ball goes outside to six. She swings and kills. That situation there, when that ball gets hit out of left side like that, we just talked about the block. You gotta in position five on the left side of the court for the Bison's number 12. She has to get outside that block and see the hitter actually hitting the ball. And it would be right in her line then. She was in behind the block. Number 12, Oksana Kozak is in for number 13 to serve. Ball serves short to the power hitter. Ball set, pipe ball to Pischke. She roll shots it into the center of the court. Ball goes outside to number six. She swings again. Uh, she's got stuff going. Pischke can't handle the ball. Yeah. That's a great set from the setter there. Michaela Reeser's having a good, strong start to this match, and the score is 19-14 for Defensa. 12 to serve again, Oksana. Pass, center of the court, good pass from Pischke. Ball gets set as a 33. Ooh. 
Ten takes a cut and misses. I don't know if I like that play. These girls can hit balls out of the middle faster. And I'd like to see them keep going and being aggressive. Somebody is calling them off and running a slower set in the middle. And I think... Looks like we got a touch or a net foul. We got lucky on that one. Yeah, no kidding. Number yeah. two. Somebody's got luck. Crystal Mulder. Score is 15-19. Serving in the center court. They got a nail tape butter. Nice set to the outside to six. They get a piece of her. Ball set to the outside to 12. Gives a roll shot to the center of the court. Setter takes the ball, runs a 31. Great dig by the position one digger. Pishke to take a cut. Deep in the corner. Ball goes outside to six again. And that's her first error. Hits the ball a little too fine out of bounds. What's really important for a hitter to do in transition like that, especially a left side hitter, is to get ready to hit the ball. She was not ready to hit the ball. Number two, Crystal Mulder. Down the line to the power hitter. Ah, there you go, a little bit more campfire defense over there. Nobody just could decide who was going to take the ball. I think Manitoba's starting to find, uh, find a little bit better pace and serving some seams. Sometimes you don't have to serve the ball as an ace, meaning to score putting it to the floor, but you can actually just serve between players. And if players are hesitant, it, it's a great situation, and that's exactly what we just had there. And maybe there's your consistency that the Bisons were talking about before the match. We're at the point now in the match where we're beginning to see some more kills by uh, the Bisons as they seem to look like they're catching their stride. Now we got a few errors on on the uh, defensive side, particularly out of number six. So you're at this point in the match. What does defensive coach say? We've been winning 80% of this set, so let's continue. We still and we're still in the lead. He's going to tell them we're still up here by two two points. We have to we have to just go out and play our game plan and get that ball out to the outside and uh, be physical with this. And what does Bentley want his team to do? He wants them to continue to serve tough and make sure that they're putting them in serve receive pressure right now. In other words, it's the after timeout serve, it has to be in. Has to be in. Number two to serve, Crystal Mulder. Into the center of the court. Ball gets passed at the 10 foot line. Swing by six, it's a roll shot. Recovered and she roll shots again. Number seven to set the pipe ball. Pishke takes a roll shot. Ball's back at the 10-foot line, runs a 31, and it scores. Number 14. I like that play. It's, a, it's aggressive again, Greg, out of the middle for Defensa. And it, even though they're not hitting the ball hard, it's changing directions quickly that we talked about before. When you change directions quickly, you're probably going to catch the defense off guard. Emily Reuter to serve, number nine. Down the line to Pischke again. Setter sets a step out to 10. It's dug in the backcourt. Seven sets a high ball to six. Rolls it into the block, but it's blocked. That's a great, great block. Just so disciplined, waiting, 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 and then up they went together. I look at the, ar the arms of the middle blocker relative to the lines of the outside blocker, and you can see them. They're parallel to each other and just on the same angle across. It's an excellent block. 12 to serve. Deep in the court. Passed well. Back set. Great cross-court shot. Michaela Reza set been almost 100%. Manitoba just got to get organized again there on their defensive IDPs. Their, or the positions where they're supposed to start and stay home and be disciplined. Okay, let's serve. Ball's deep. A little bit of miscommunication. Libero shovels it over. Good pass at the 10-foot line. Runs a 31 again. And number two can't take the ball. This is interesting because the center now is obviously being aware of what they can take advantage of. The blocker for Manitoba in the middle is not respecting that middle offensively from Defensa. She's got to go over in man to man. Leslie Smythe into the game. Number six, Michaela Reeser to serve again. Scores 22-18. Serves down the line at Pischke. Ball's passed well inside the 10 foot line. Back to Pischke. She swings and is blocked by number 14. But you know what? I like that though. Like she's it's getting late in the game. You want to see your hitters. And Pischke is one of the go-to players, no question, on this team, on this Manitoba team. But she's, she pulled on that ball. Number six, Reeser to serve again. Again to Pischke. Great pass. Ah, lefty turns and burns. 
It's a great play by Pischke because she just got blocked. Strategically, the, pat, the server went back, served her again. She put the ball on the dime and staying focused in the game. Well done. Number 10 for the buys is Miranda Schmidt to serve. Number 11 passes the ball, goes back side to seven again. Oh. And tools number five, Pischke. That's such a tough, tough block to make because the hitter is actually outside the court and it's coming in from the side of your arm when you're trying to block it. It looks like they should make that block. It's probably one of the most difficult blocks to make because you almost have to turn and face them and then try to time it back into the court and you don't want your hitters doing that. Number two blockers. for defense in, Lauren Master-Luizzi. And number two, Crystal Mulder's back in for the Bison. Serves into the center court, great serve. Set up to five. It's a soft wipe shot. Ball comes back over, a little bit of a misplay. Center sets a 62 play. It's dug, but they can't get it back over the net. That was a great play there on the Bison's part. The setter moved the middle hitter behind her and starting to change, what, change a particular zone instead of being static in their offense. Setter to serve. Great pass. Ball goes back side to seven. Joust at the net. A little bit of an error there. As much as the referee does not want to call that in a gold medal match, it's advantage for them for playing the ball incorrectly. They, they have to call that. It's a tough play. Timeout by defense of the coach is Kevin Horn. So scores 24-21. What does Kevin want his team to do at this point? They have to serve receive the ball. Somebody has to step up and be committed to passing the ball. They, uh, they, there was some hesitation there. What usually you see there is that somebody else wants the person beside them to take over and no one's taking, taking charge of the situation right now. That's, that, that is key right now. Step up, leave it all on the court. Who's, who gets the ball at this point in the game? 24, 20, 21, you're receiving the ball. And we have, I'd be giving it to, um, i just let the left side player just swing away outside. Give her a great set. She, nothing has to be fancy here. Ball's in play by the, oh, it's out of bounds. Chipped it wide. Did you notice, Greg, she went back there, she grabbed the ball. How many seconds do we have? I think it's eight seconds. She took maybe two and a half seconds, she blasted the ball. And uh, she has to regroup in her own mind now that that's something that they don't want, they can't afford to be doing against a Fenzer or any other team like that. That's just a fundamental error. Let's not count the uh, Manitoba team out. They have way too much experience on that team. So for somebody who doesn't normally watch volleyball, what, what would you expect a coach to say at this point, for Bentley to say? Would he flip his lineup? Do you feel like he's being hurt by Anybody in particular needs to change his blocking. What we may see, I don't think he's going to change any personnel. I think the personnel is going to stay there. But I think maybe because they're having some trouble blocking a couple of their left side players, they may try to rotate maybe two or three. That might be something you'll see. Try to get certain people matched up to each any other. Any changes in serving tactics at present? Manitoba's got to serve more aggressively, and they have to take more control in their server receive passing on their own side. Worry about what's happening on their side. Right. If you look at leaders in the match, leaders in the match, uh, number six for Defensa, leading with uh, five kills. She's had four errors late in that set and about four continues. On the Manitoba side, leading killer is actually uh, number nine, Jordana Mills. She's got four kills and no errors, just one continue. What's interesting too, Greg, in that situation as a middle, like you wouldn't expect that, right, in a match like that. Usually your big kills are coming out of either right side or left side. Yeah. And uh, right now, I would go back out there as Defensa and I'd make sure I keep trying to exploit that until at least you see two people starting to commit on the middle to try to jump and block. Okay, just about to start here again. Looks like they're giving themselves a little pep, pep, pep talk here and uh, get focused. And We need to see a little bit more leadership, a little bit more from the setter on Manitoba team. 
Do you, do you see any big differences in the, the fact that, need, well, a defensive seems to use a much more varied attack, use more back row balls? Yeah, and I, I think sometimes in uh, at this level, not just girls volleyball, but boys volleyball too, a lot of times the back row attack is not that refined yet. But they are a little bit more defensive, a little bit more physical coming out of the back row. It's defendable. You can defend against it. Yeah. But I don't think Manitoba is, is used to seeing that much coming out of the back row. Number nine, Emily Reuter to begin the game, score 0-0. Zero, zero. Served into the center of the court. Ball goes to the center, sets it outside to Pischke. Tries to cut it off the block and misses. They don't need to play in desperation right now. And that's what it looks like to me with Manitoba. They need to get Pischke going, get her into the game, get her start feeling good. She's not quite what she can be right now. Number 10 to serve. They got the ball for touch off a block. Pass is good inside the 10-foot line. Seven swings back. It's a reject ball. Ball comes up, goes to the backside. Roll shot. Good dig. Setter's going to dump. Ball's up inside the 10-foot line. Runs a 31. Excellent dig by number two. Ball's coming back over. Libero passes the ball. Back set. And a great attempt by two, but a great shot. That's, that's nice offense there when you run the middle player. Um and they push the middle player on the to the left, far left side of their court and then set behind and it opens up. And so we get a one-on-one -on -one situation, meaning one blocker, one hitter, it's ideal. Number six, Michaela Reasoner to serve. Into the center of the court, it's a good pass. Goes outside to Pischke, she swings and gets blocked. I don't see either one of them being comfortable right now. No, neither one of them, Gregor, that's exactly right. And what, what has to happen, that middle, even though the middle knows that five is going to be, that Pischke's going to get the ball, Manitoba middle has to come screaming in there and show that they want the ball to hold the middle blocker on the other side. Six puts it in play. Ball's back to the center. Back to Pischke. Swings and she cuts it cross court. It's dug. Ball's up in the center of the court. Libero passes it over. Good pass out of the six pair. Turns and burns and scores. That'd be one of your strategies, get the setter more involved in the offense. And I think she's going to have to because the, her own middle is not holding that middle blocker. She's going to have to step it up a bit. Lefty serve. Ball's passed at the 10-foot line, goes to the outside. Four takes a swing, and the Bisons block it back in her body. Great block. Nice outside, right strong hand. That's a key in being able to block that ball into the middle of the court. Ball served again by lefty server, cross court. Serve great pass this time. Goes to the back side to seven. Cuts it. And completely surprises the liberal. Whenever there's a gap in the block like that, when there's a hole between two players, that's one of the first things you want players to look for is the, that hole. And 80% of the time, bury it into the middle of the court. It's exactly what they did. Number 14, Katarina Jovacic to serve. Into the center of the court. It's a misplay. Ball goes over the net. Good free ball pass. Goes back side to seven. Wasn't a great set. Wasn't a great hit. One of the things that you try to teach your players to do, and you, as it comes along, it, it's experiences. The setter was in a little bit difficult position, defensa, and she set the ball inside, and the footwork of the uh, right side player was, uh, was not ideal. Well, Taylor Pischke got a sniveler there. Went off the top of the tape and scored. Sometimes I uh, wish they treat that like in real tennis, <laughs> a reserve on that. I'm sure anyone in the gold medal match would like the same thing. Serve again by Pischke. Into the center of the court. A bit of a misplay. Ball's up now in the center of the court. It's back over to the Bisons. Free ball pass is excellent. On the money, a little bit of a miscue on the part of the hitter there. Seven takes a swing cross court. And the setter, Christina Souza, can't recover the ball. still don't look comfortable in it. They don't. They don't. And the uh, defense is just swinging away. Yep. Like they're, they look like they're enjoying it more. Number seven. Christina's great pass by Pischke. Ball goes to the outside to 12. Takes a swing. Great deep cross court shot. That's what I'd like to see 
both left sides doing for Manitoba right now is, is hitting more to the middle of the court until they get their bearings, and then they can start carving the ball a bit more and finessing it a bit once you get a good feel for it. Number nine, Jordana, Jordana Milne to serve. It's a floater into the center of the court. Excellent pass. Center sets the outside hitter, number four, swings and gets blocked. This is great blocking on Manitoba's part. I, they're deserving of where the score is right now because on, we'll, I think what we're going to see right now is defensive setter is going to have to do something behind her um, offensively right now because we've just been blocked three, three solid times here. Nine to serve. It's down the line. Another excellent pass. Goes quick and gets blocked by Tim. Footwork, footwork, footwork on the middle coming in towards the setter. That pass came up to the setter a little bit too fast, Greg. And as a result of that, the middle player, it's like a domino effect, really. The pass comes up to the setter really fast, and then all of a sudden the middle player is not anticipating. He's ex she's expecting it to be higher. And uh, then she's behind. That's a setter decision. You hope they don't set that middle because everything is so late that there's no way that they can hit it past the block because the block is just sitting there. Well, and if you look at the stats between the two teams, now the tables seem to have reversed themselves. You've got the Bisons with very few errors and Defensor with many more. My question always at this point is, are they actually forcing the errors or these are just inattentive errors on Defensor's part? I, th I think what we're seeing here now is Defensor, they have, um, they're not serving as tough. First and foremost, that's the first contact. And they're allowing these guys, allowing Manitoba to get back into it with, a, with some momentum. And uh, they have cleaned up and uh, are doing so much better, Manitoba's, with their block on the right side. So how does the second game slump start? A couple of serves out, a couple of wrong people set. Served in the middle of the court, passed up. Number four swings deep in the court. She gets the over bump and scores. Manitoba just has to forget that play. They're in the driver's seat right now. They have the momentum. Scores 5-8. Andrea Fisher to serve. Falls into position one. Liberal makes a great pass. Goes 31 to 10. And 13 got it. Briscoe just mirrored her, uh, the girl on the other side. That's discipline blocking. Stay with her, man. Good fundamental solid block in the middle. Andrea to serve again. Ball's again in the middle of court. Pischke mishandles it. Ball's passed back to her as a pipe ball. She hits a deep. We used to call that the terrible triad. <laughs> bad pass, bad set, bad hit. Yeah, all in one. We always tell the kids uh, and the athletes, better the ball. Better the ball, better the ball. Four to serve again. Scores tight now. Pisky with a great pass. Ball goes backside to two. She cuts it underneath number six. It's interesting. We're starting to see that leadership starting to evolve with the setter for Manitoba. She's starting to get sets in the better position for the hitters. Manitoba to serve. Hey, you don't like that error. You know... Especially after a nice offensive play like they just had, go back and score another point. It's real simple. They let defensive back into this with that type of stuff. Number 13, Chelsea Briscoe. A good pass by Pischke. Ball goes 62. And it's dug cross court. Over bump. And it's hit out. Just regroup here, Manitoba. You guys. Uh, these girls are just starting to look uh, a little bit frustrated again. This regroup, stay focused, know what they need to do. Game tied, 13, 9-9. Nine, nine. Ball's past the right side. Twaz takes a cut. Great dig by number four. Ball goes to the left side. Six takes a cut. Pischke read it well. Ball goes to the quick set hitter. I don't think she expected that. It's a, uh, it's a tough job being a setter, <laughs> knowing when your hitters are ready. Sometimes you give it to them and wake them up, but in, this, in a game like this, you can't afford that. Number 13, Chelsea Briscoe to serve again. Just about a great serve. I, um, I don't mind miss serves out the back by a ball with 
Ball in the half. Into the net, there's no chance. At least over the net, someone could take that ball that's going out. Number 12 to serve. Spike serve, ball's passed near the 10 foot line. Backcourt swing by 12. And it doesn't look like anybody's ready to dig that ball. Again, Defensa, they're putting themselves back into it by swinging at the ball. Scores 11-10, Defensa. Ball's into position one. Setter sets the outset to 10. Got two on her there. No place to go. And Ken Bentley calls a timeout at 12-10. After being up, 8-4. You can just feel the momentum changing by some fundamental errors. It's not exactly, it doesn't look exactly to me like defense has really tried to dominate. What have we got for stats there, Greg? Well, we got... We have still leaders in the match uh, for defense of number six. Uh, number seven uh, has chipped in. Nicole Serator has chipped in. Um, the person that still hasn't gotten really good and started for the Bison is number five. Doesn't seem to be in a rhythm. Doesn't seem to be able to uh, be able to dominate maybe the way she'd like to. I think um, whenever you see the situation, when the crowd is watching this on the periphery and what you see is someone like Pishke number five struggling. I always believe that it's important, especially because she's a left side, the setter has a responsibility to commit that middle blocker on the other side by setting her own middle a lot, and then she's going to get one-on-one -on -one situations outside for her key hitters later in the sets. Build a little confidence. Ball served again. 12 passes it into the backcourt. Two sets a high ball to Pishke. It's dug in the cross court. 14 tries to make a play. The ball goes back over the net. Seven takes a swing at it. It's a reject ball. Liberal passes the ball. Cuts it down the line. Seven takes the ball to six. She wipes it off the block. That's a good hit. Hitting it hard into the block sometimes is not a bad choice. It looks so obvious, but it's if the block isn't formed, it's always advantage hitter. This has a chance to get away on him now. Served into the center of the court, and it's shanked by two. Let's see this. I want to see this server go back there and just stay focused and count and take her time and serve at that girl again. <clears throat> That's a tough situation when you're a serve receiver because you know you're going to get it Number 14 right at you Bisons. again. Is she going to serve the one that just came off the bench, or is she going to serve the one that made the error? Ball goes at the sub. 12 passes a high ball. Nice ball to Pishke, and she, and she gets a kill. That's what I've been wanting to see her do, is to turn it, take her lumps, turn it back into the middle of the court where it's a little bit safer, hit it high, hit it hard. If the block isn't formed, it's going to be her advantage. Miranda Schmidt, the serve for the Bison, scores 11-14. Ball serves short, position four. Quick set, great execution to 14. We don't see enough of this. I love this 31 that they're running, what we call a 31. It's just, you're about a meter and a half away from the setter. The middle goes up, jumps, and they just fire it up there. You have so much time as a middle player to see the court where to hit that ball. It's a great play. I love it. Number six to serve. Ball's into the center of the court. Set outside to Pischke. She tips. And it's called out. Tough call. I like that play, though. She just hit one, ripped one into the middle of the court. At this stage, though, when, when you're down 16-11, you got to hit the ball. Michaela Reeser to serve again. Score 16-11. Pass at the 10-foot line. Goes back to Pischke. She swings. Off the block, it's dug. Setter sets to four. Liberal almost got the ball, but not quite. Let's go back there and look at that situation. That pass that's coming up to the setter for Manitoba is just enough off the net so that the middle player is taken out of the play for them offensively. And everybody in the gym knows that the ball's got to go left front. I would like Manitoba, if they're going to be in that situation, they have to do something creatively with the right side. Because otherwise, they're just going to have two people out there camping on her. And that makes for tough, uh, tough, sw tough slugging. So how much of this is passing and how much of this is communication between the 
setter and the hitter, or the inability of the setter to get the hitter to be comfortable. I think, you know, you look back and you say, what did they practice in practice? We talk about practice. And probably they practice more balls that are perfect than ones that are not. And right now, let's see how creative these girls are going to be and how, uh, how much risk they're willing to take. Because you look at the stats, Fishkey still only got three kills and she got a lot of continues. And no one would expect that. People would want to have seen that, a, a different situation. Balls back to number six, Michaela Reeser to serve. Ball's deep in the court. Pass up. Easy pass over the net. Kind of handcuffs her in the back court. Ball gets past to the net. Oh, we're still playing scrambly ball now. To the setter. Back to Pischke and inside set. It's dug by the liberal. Back to number four. She swings deep. Got a good pass. Goes back to position four. And Pischke got blocked. When, when the... Um when the crowd looks at that situation with Pitchkey going down hard like that, everyone in the gym blames it on the hitter. The coach sitting on the bench goes, setter, please put the ball outside so my hitter can have something to swing at. Ball's back in. Ball's well passed. Set by the setter, sets quick set and scores. There's some risk, that they're taking a chance there. They know they need to get this ball. Manitoba's got to get this ball back into the middle because they're just camping on the outside. That's key. Even if the ball is being serve-received off the net three or four or five feet, she's got to start forcing that middle. Number seven, Christina Souza to serve. Pass by the Libero. It's good at the net. Four swings. Deep shot in. See, defense's middle there was just there and held that middle blocker of Manitoba just long enough so there was a gap in the block hit as deep and down in through the uh, middle of the court. Number two, Lauren Master Luisi in to serve and she's a good server. Score is 19-12. They need to make a run here on the Bison side if they're going to get back into this. She serves a bullet. Pass well deep in the court. Ball's coming back. It's a free ball. Good pass to the setter. Great set to four. Really nice block by the Bison. Great block. Great block. The timing is important that they come up with this now. It's going to be interesting because Pischke's going into the back row. We do have three hitters in the front row for Manitoba right now, so that's always a bit of an advantage to have three hitters offensively. Pischke to serve, scores 13-19. She got another one. That's the second sniveler in the same set. A point's a point. <laughs> it's a great technical term, don't you think, sniveler? I like that one. I haven't heard Snivel, that one very much, but uh, it's been a while, but it uh, must be an American term, Eric, must, right, yeah, that you brought must, up. Yeah. Great pass. Ball goes outside to four, takes a swing, cross court. The libero is still in motion, moving left to right. We need to see her coming towards the ball. That ball should be dug. Yep, well defined by the block. Seven serves. Cross court to Pischke. Good pass. Two takes a cut. Doesn't make it over the net. You know, the setter's trying some stuff here. The setter's trying to do something different. She knows she needs to. But there's huge pressure on these guys right now. More pressure than they would want. 21-14. Cuts the ball in the middle of the net. Number seven. Seems to me this is the point of time you don't want to do that. Just make them play. Manitoba's going to have to serve tough here. They're going to have to take some risk on their serves. Nine Jordana and be aggressive. To serve. Pass at the 10 foot line. Ball goes outside to four. And she cuts that off the block. Especially as a middle blocker, that left hand when that ball hits you, you have to be committed to the block and not just hope that they hit it into you. You have, to, exactly. feel like, you have to feel like you're an offensive threat even though you're on defense with your hands. Number three, Bree Rector is in the match. Looks like a blocking sub. Number four, Andrea to Fisher to serve. Good serve. Fishkey pass goes outside to 12. 12 tips into the pot. Ball comes over. 
A little bit of a misplay there by six. Number two's in the right spot to block the ball. Defenza is still in the uh, in the driver's seat here, and they uh, will see them uh, just regroup here, and away they go. Number two, Crystal Mulder to serve. Excellent pass. Ball's a dumped for the first time in the match by the center. You know, that is a point. This isn't something you would uh, be sitting on your bench telling your uh, your setter to do. And it absolutely drives the other team crazy <laughs> when unorthodox events happen like that in the game. You don't expect it at that Especially point. when it's 23-16. Number 12 to serve, Oksana Kozak. Ball goes down the line to Pischke. Good pass. Ball goes back outside to 12. She swings off the block. Number seven can't make the play. On defense, when that ball is coming off the block, again, it's changing direction. That's the one that always catches you. So you have to feel like you're in motion at the point when the attacker is actually contacting the ball. Even if you're going in the wrong direction, it's better than standing still. Number 12, Danica Pickelick to serve. And it's a spike serve. Into the center of the court. Good pass. Runs a flat outside set to six. Great dig. Two sets cross court to Pischke. Cuts it into four. Pipe ball to four. Great dig by the Liberal. Good set outside. Pischke takes another swing. Down the line and it's in. That ball there, Greg. Um, I know Pischke's capable of that, hitting that ball. As long as that ball gets outside, in what we call a pocket out there, where they can hit it cross court, hit it in the seam in between the block, or hit it hard and high down the line. That's exactly what she just did. Pickelick to serve again. Down the line this time. Ball gets tipped deep. Looks like a swing and a miss. Hesitation will kill you. Yeah. Well, it's match point. To me, it looks like the key issue has been that defense has passed way better than Bison's have. That's that's what I see, and I it, it it's it's when you break it down like that, the game is actually quite simple. It's the first contact. Match point, national championship point. Good pass. Ball goes back to number five. She swings. It's a great shot down the line. Nine oh, I love that in a hitter. To yeah. stand up there. She just stood right up there, and she just ripped the crap out of the ball. She knows that she's got to go for it right now. Nine and everybody in the 24. gym right now knows Pischke's going to get this in transition. Who's going to get the ball on this side? Ten to serve. Passed into the center of the court. Ball goes outside to seven. Swings. Nice dig by ten. Setters pass it back over the net. Liberal pass in the middle. Goes backside. Great cut down the line. It's over. There's a lot of um, a lot of great things that happened on both sides of the court here in this game. Like I said when we first started, Greg, it's it's. It, Amazing every year we come back here and we see this and we see the game evolving and seeing how athletic these girls are and uh, I it just looked like Defensa had a more concise game plan that they stuck with and the girls played with no fear. You know on the other side of the, the, the coach before the match said that the, the big issues for him were, were to use the athleticism of his team and when you look at the stats, the stats bear that out. Because you've got number seven, number six, Michaela Reeser had a great match with nine kills. Number four, Andrea Fisher had a great match with nine kills. And uh, number seven, Nicola, Nicoletta Serator had a great match with six kills. On the other side of the coin, you didn't really have anybody stand out. Right. And and, and if 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 it was my take on it, my take on it is one team passed way better than the other yeah. and didn't allow everybody else to get involved. And you see that too when you when you can actually see three different hitters like that in Defenza's uh, camp where they've actually uh, were able to take advantage of not just one hitter but three different hitters stepped up to the plate. You got the last word. What would you say? This is so exciting to see this here. These girls, uh, there's a lot of emotion here for these girls because uh, it's a U18 final and a lot of them are off. And uh, I would be surprised that we don't see at least 80 to 90% of these girls going on to play post-secondary, either in Canada or south of the border. Hopefully they'll stay closer to home so we get to see them. 
but it's uh, fantastic uh, volleyball we see how saw today. And next year it's in Toronto, and there'll be a thousand teams there. So let's get everybody out to watch some great volleyball. You bet. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Greg.